morning, my name is Adrian Locke, and I'd like to talk about my baby brother, <coughs> Jared Elam. Jared was one of the type of people who had to excel at everything he did from the moment he was a baby. Coming into this world, into a family full of girls, and one boy, another one of my brothers, he broke the chain of girls. I mean, girls, we had girls forever. <laughs> and then there came Jared, so he was always special. Jared was, he was more than just um, my uncle. It's one big thing that uh, I think a lot of people don't realize about him. Um, because of the fact that we were so close in age, and he was only four years older than me, um, there were so many things that I could always talk to him about, so much advice that I could, you know, kind of just, I guess, take from him. You know, it was, it was really, it was really, I don't even know how to, how to describe it. It was, it was more of a, uh, a brother relationship that we had. Mm -hmm. that, um, you know, it, it was, I mean, I can remember so many times going over to the house and, you know, Tamane and Jared were always there and, and they'd always teach me things and, uh, you know, <laughs> give me advice on things too, which was always pretty funny. But it was always great having Jared's perspective too because the fact that we're so similar, him and I, uh, a lot of people always said that we, we come across the same, uh, we talk the same, we have some of the same tendencies. It's, <laughs> it's really, really funny, actually. But. They were so much alike. They were so much alike, the two of them. Um, one of my favorite memories of Jared is um, actually when we were kids, uh, Grandma and Granddad used to live in Manchester, which is, you know, the north side of Pittsburgh. Um, and right around the corner was a community pool. And I remember when we were kids, we used to go there all the time, you know, just like, <laughs> I remember Granddad always saying, like, geez, you guys keep going to the pool all the time. And just keep going to the pool. And uh, I remember I was about four at the time, I believe. And being four years old, four or five, actually, I may have been about five or six, around that age. Um, you know, being that young, I still didn't really know how to swim that well. And I remember Tremaine and Jared uh, taking me, you know, Again, going to the pool and you know saying you know what you're gonna have to get out of the shallow water we're gonna you know move you over to the deep so I remember that. I remember just being very very nervous about it and being very tense and of course when you're tense when you're swimming that's when you just you know <laughs> sink like a rock you know and you, and you sit there and you know I mean you know <laughs> but I remember one of the things that Jared said to me which was really really funny and it holds true to this day and I still do it when, when I'm swimming but he said listen me and you, okay, we're both big guys, right? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, one of the things about us, when you're a big guy like us, if you're in the pool, all you have to do is just relax and you'll just float and you'll just sink to the top. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. So it took me a while, but maybe like, actually maybe like 20 minutes later before I knew it, here I was actually floating. And from there, it was just like, whoa, <laughs> like, it was just so funny though. I mean, I can, I can literally just lay in the water now and just float without a problem. And, you know, and from there, of course, you know, learning how to swim and everything too. It's just, it's really funny that, you know, just a little lesson like that, just because of the fact that me and him were both the same body type. Me and him were both big guys. You know, he <laughs> said to me, you know, just relax and, <laughs> and then I'm floating. <laughs> I was a lot older than Jarrett. My mother literally had two sets of children and um, by the time Jared was born, I was already 18. So I remember Jared, as a little boy, saying to me, Adrian, you know, you don't have to have any kids, right? Because you have us. And I said, that's right, Jared, I have you. And my mother always called him my brother son. And he was more like a son to me than a brother. And when he graduated from college, for instance, I gave him his first car, you know, which was my old car, and he was so happy to have that car. He was so excited about getting that, and it was my first brand new car, so to him it was just, that's the memory I'll always remember is giving him, you know, he was, he was my brother's son, just like my mom said. And it's so funny though too, you reminded me of another memory of, uh, I remember that, that same car. Mm -hmm. He actually uh, gave me one of my first driving lessons in that car too, mm -hmm. actually. <laughs> because again, you know, he was more of like a, a big brother, uh, it, was, it was more like a big brother, like cousin kind of thing. You know, it wasn't, it, it wasn't like an uncle, you know, it was mm -hmm. someone who you, you know, could actually talk to and confide in, you know.
He always told me <laughs> that he wanted to be like me because I, you know, I put my career first, you know, before. And I guess that's probably be being the oldest of 12 children and raising them, that was my family. You know, I, it was like I already had my kids, I had them. So when he went to college and he said, you know what, sis, I wanna be just like you. I wanna get, you know, do everything the right way. I wanna get my career on the right track first, you know, and get, you know, my, myself situated, you know, before I start have, thinking about having kids and having a family and, you know, and I, I, in hindsight, I, I'm glad he, because I think it would be so much harder now, you know. I remember the day that Jared called me and said, this, you know, I'm in Buffalo and, you know, I completed my firefighter training. I was like, you're what? What, what did this happen? What do you mean firefighter training? And because I'm a flight attendant, he was telling me this because he wanted to know when I could come to visit him. And I was still getting over the shock of him being a firefighter, like, wait a minute. And um, he, we could never get our date straight. Anytime I was in Buffalo, he'd be in Pittsburgh. And it just kind of always worked out that way. But um, when he passed away and we met his Big Tree family, which then became our family, it's just been the most amazing bond. It's just, it's indescribable. I remember getting the phone call that he was ill and thinking, my baby brother is there and he's all alone. And that drive to Buffalo from Pittsburgh and the storm was pretty bad going up there. It was sleeting and it was ice and it took us so long. And I can just remember running into that hospital and when I got to his room and seeing the amount of firefighters that were there, his firefighter family, his big tree, brothers and sisters, and they never left his side. I mean, we were there for days because he was an organ donor, so all that took time. And they actually put us in a separate room. They set up for us because there were so many of us and that was just, we're still in touch today, my Big Tree family, you know, and that's thanks to my baby brother, bringing people together. That was, you know, the type of person he was. And he was always determined to, yes. you know, whatever he set his mind to, he had to not only do it, but he had to excel at it. and. You know, he was one of those people that would be there no matter what, through good times, bad times, thick and thin. You know, he was just, he was, he's the epitome of what a young man should, should be. be. So true. He absolutely was the epitome of what a young man should be. That's so true. That pretty much sums it up.